quadcopters, such as this one, and fixed-wing drones, such as this one, are already helping farmers increase their crop yields, protecting people in wildfire intervention, fighting crime, and in landmine detection. And the number of potential applications is nearly infinite. Where does my passion for flying things come from? In elementary school, I would observe whatever was up flying in the sky. Like in this case, with the, an early relationship of love and hate with my pet dragonfly. And actually, as long as they had wings, I was in. Like in this case, with ostriches. <laughs> in middle school, I trained the pigeon to fly a specific path over my uh, garden, and then I would record it using a camcorder and play the video back on my TV and draw patterns, kinematic patterns of the wing on the TV screen. And this went on for a couple of weeks until one day my parents came back from summer vacations and uh, when they saw the drawings on the TV screen, well, I had to stop the experiment. Fast forward to the present days, the lack in safety and reliability of flying robots is holding them back from many potential applications. And my aim as a roboticist and aerospace engineer is to uh, improve the technology and facilitate real world uh, adoption. Specifically, here at Brown, I work on fixed wing drones, which, are more, uh, which have more payload capacity and autonomy than quadcopters, and therefore are more suitable for some specific applications. To sustain their own weight during flight, they need a wing. So please try this at home. While driving your car, put a hand out of your uh, window and tilt it at a slight angle with the incoming flow. You will experience a vertical force, which is due to a high pressure region on the uh, palm of your hand and a low pressure region on the back of your hand. And this is actually how a wing works. Now, for this mechanism to function, the flow has to stay attached to the wing, uh, which in turn results in a very thin uh, shape for the wing. This means that whatever uh, the drone has to transport, a camera or a pair of shoes, you cannot fit it directly in the wing and you need an external fuselage to, hold, to host it. The external fuselage generates additional drag, aerodynamic drag, and therefore it is not possible to efficiently transport large payloads over long distances. And moreover, the vertical force that the wing is able to generate is limited. Um, at Kenny Breuer's lab, we developed a new type of wing that plays with the flow and exploits flow separation instead of preventing it. So we let the flow separate from the wing and then we use a special technique to reattach the flow toward the back of the wing. And in this way, we achieve wing thicknesses which are up to five times more than traditional wings. And we can create and generate vertical forces which are up to four times more than traditional wings. Suddenly, a new universe of opportunities opens up. Large payloads uh, can be transported efficiently over long distances within the wing. Payloads can also, such as antennas, for instance, can be directly integrated in the wing without the need for a fuselage. And the uh, high vertical force is beneficial for, for instance, personal flying devices or flying cars, which are now one step closer to reality. And also, due to the simplified geometry, we can potentially lower manufacturing costs. These are all reasons why my research matters. However, there is another one. So this dramatic improvement in drone performance stems from a radical departure toward uncharted territories. And this requires a lot of risk taking, which is easier to do when passion is at play. So for this reason, while building the next generation of flying robots, we will make sure to get young kids and students inspired so that they will start building their own machines, dare to do crazy things, maybe even train their own pigeons in the backyards, <laughs> and make the future happen. Thank you. <laughs>